Okay, in this um, video, we're going to talk a lot about um, the domain and range of an inverse function, um, or the domain and range of the inverse of a function. Okay, so let's say we begin with, um, say, f of x is equal to, um, I had picked one, uh, x plus 2 squared minus 5. Okay, so hopefully you remember enough um, about quadratics to know that this is a quadratic whose origin is at negative 2, negative 5. And here it is. I graphed it on our Casio calculator, and that's that function f. Um, so when we go to find the, um, the inverse, we switch x and y and then solve for y. So we would say um, that x is equal to y plus 2 squared minus 5. I'm going to now try and solve for my y value. So I um, do the opposite of minus 5, which is plus 5. I take the I do the opposite now of the square squaring, which is taking the square root. And then I need to do the opposite of plus 2, which is minus 2. And I get that this, and our notation, if you remember, is that the inverse of f is that x to the, f to the negative 1 of x is equal to the square root of x plus 5 minus 2. The minus 2 is not under the radical. Okay, so this is what... Um, I assume that you've seen before when we talked about inverses. Well, what happens, though, is that our initial, our initial function f is a function. It, it passes the vertical line test. And you can see that in the graph right over here, um, that it's, sorry, that the, you, could, you could pass a vertical line through any of these points, pretend I can actually draw a vertical line, um, and it, it only hits in one place. Okay, so looking at this graph, you see the blue curve is still that same, that same function that we started with. And then the green, what I've done is I've used my, my Casio calculator. I went under, I hit F4 for sketch, and then one of the options under there was that to sketch the inverse. Um, I, in v, I don't know, it may not have spelled out the whole word, but that's, you'd figure it out. And it's, the, what my calculator does is it takes that first function and finds the inverse of it. It switches all the x's and y's, and, um, but this green graph is not a function. See how that fails the vertical line test. There's a point here and a point here, et cetera. Um, so what we have to do is um, we have to come back to the original blue function and restrict the domain of that so that when I take its inverse, the inverse is a function. Because it's not very useful for us to have um, um, an inverse here that, that isn't a function. Okay, so in other words, when we think about this, our original function had, a, and that's the blue graph, had a domain. Oh, so sorry. Okay, it had a domain of all real, from negative infinity to positive infinity, um, and then its range it went as low as negative five, which I can see right here where it shifted it down. So my range it included negative five, and then it went off to positive infinity. Well, this new the new function excuse me, the new inverse, um, it wasn't a function until we restrict the domain here. So you have to be really careful in these problems. You have to answer the question that they ask. If they say, what's the domain of f? The domain of f is all reals. But if they say, uh, and then when they say, okay, hang on, let me come back to that in just a second. So in our new, our new inverse function, we want it to be a function, so we don't want all of the green up here. We just want this top, the positive part right there. So the domain of that is from negative 5 to infinity, um, and then its range, it goes as low as negative 2, and then it goes off to positive infinity, the, the part that I highlighted here. Um, so, so now back to that idea of, of being intentional about answering the question that is asked. If they say... What's the domain of the function? Well, the domain didn't have any restrictions, the domain of f. We had to restrict it so that when we took its inverse, its inverse would still be a function. Um, so we would have restricted the, the domain to this, negative 2 to positive infinity. 
Notice that the range of a function is the domain of its inverse, and then the domain of the function is the range of its inverse, um, unless the domain gives us, if we use the entire domain, we don't get a function. Uh, I hope this is clear. Let me continue with another point and see if this, if this gets better for you. Okay, so continuing on with the same point, I'm going to tweak what we say a little bit and see if this, um, this, this helps. So let's say I start at a new place. Let's say I start at, um, at the function g that is the square root of x plus 5 minus 2. So I came down and graphed that in blue down here. That's, um, I used my, my calculator again, um, and I graphed the square root of x plus 5 minus 2 and got that blue, the blue curve. Um, then I went in and asked my calculator to find its inverse. Well, you'll notice it only found the inverse of part of, like, the inverse over here is that same quadratic that we just started with. But the domain of, well, the domain of this was from negative 5 to infinity, and the range was from negative 2 to infinity. And since the inverse only has this blue graph to go off of, it doesn't have more, it doesn't have the entire parabola. So it, we don't see the entire parabola because we only started with this first piece um, Think of it as you've got, you've got one arm, and then when you take its inverse, you still only have one arm. You're not able to grow another arm. Um, so, sorry, that got a little messy. So what we have, this new um, function, this, this, the inverse of g, its domain is no longer all reals because its domain is very closely linked with the original function here. The range is negative 5 to infinity. Okay, and now this is what's confusing. We're used to thinking, well, okay, this, this is not confusing. The domain of one is the range of the other. Um, but we're used to seeing this equation up here and thinking, oh, okay, its domain is all real. It's quadratic. You can plug in any number you want. But because it came from this other equation right here, it doesn't get to have a domain of all reals. Um, so it had, we have just one arm, and then when we take its inverse, we get just one arm. We're not able to grow another arm. Okay, hopefully, um, hopefully that kind of clears things up again. Watch this again, and if it still doesn't, then come see me. Okay, good luck.